Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Black Ops 2 In-Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be discussing the Hammer Light Machine Gun. You're going to see that my gameplay is slightly better this episode, as I do rather like the Hammer, and this is a weapon that I was familiar with and had leveled up to begin with, so expect the gameplay to be a little bit better. And I want you all to stick with me all the way through this episode, because I've got a lot to talk about. The Hammer is a very, very unusual and unique light machine gun. Its damage is unusual, its range is, well actually its range is fairly usual, but the rate of fire is extremely unusual in this, and because of the rate of fire it has a lot of abnormal properties that need to be discussed for a proper weapon review. But like any proper weapon review, we're going to start off today with damage. It deals 40 damage in close quarters combat, but as your enemies get further and further away, your damage is going to decrease down to 24. The damage profile ensures that it takes somewhere between 3 to 5 shots to kill the enemy, just kind of depending on how far away they are and where you're hitting them. This is very common for the light machine gun class. Matter of fact, all of the light machine guns have this exact same uh, shots to kill. However, the damage profile here is a little different and the range is a little bit different than some of the others. It will deal 30 damage between 31 and 72 meters. That means it's going to be dealing its maximum 40 damage, or 3 shot kill, all the way up to 31 meters, which is... I would say about half of the engagements in this game, and then it's going to be 30 damage between 31 and 72 meters, which is a four shot kill range, which is going to cover 99.9% .9 of all the other engagements, and then all the way out at 72 meters, which is a very extreme range, it's going to drop down to a five shot kill. So in all practical purposes, this is a three to four shot kill light machine gun. It's going to have a very consistent time to kill, and you're going to get a good feel for it very easily, but most of the other light machine guns, with the exception of the QBB, are this way. It is a medium ranged light machine gun machine gun, and I say that it is a medium ranged light machine gun, not that it is a medium range weapon. It is definitely a long range weapon, at least that's how its uh, damn range the profile is set up compared to assault rifles, compared to LMGs, uh, submachine guns. The range is very, very long, but compared to other light machine guns, it's pretty normal. If you were to put a silencer on this weapon, your range decreases by 30%. This, uh, again, there's some confusion about. Your bullets don't disappear after 70 something meters, they're just doing their minimum damage, and the silencer makes it do its minimum damage earlier on in that range range profile. Unlike some of the other light machine guns or guns in this game in general, it has a 1.2x headshot multiplier, which is about as high as it gets. This ensures that it's going to take one less shot to kill in several key regions. If you think about it, 1.2x40 is only 48, so that doesn't change anything, but 1.2x30 is 36, that moves it from a 4 to 3 shot kill, and 1.2x24 moves it from a 5 to 4 shot kill. So headshots are useful outside of close quarters combat. In close quarters combat, they're not particularly useful anything medium long range headshots going to cause you to get one less shot to kill it's going to be very beneficial in hardcore mode the hammer is almost always a one shot kill just as long as you're not shooting through walls you'll find that its damage is such that people have to be extremely far away to require two shots to kill however if you're shooting through a wall it doesn't quite have the raw damage to uh, get one shot kills even though the bullet penetration is very good statistically and numerically let's say you get 99 percent damage when you shoot through a wall if somebody's at medium range which would be 30 damage and you shoot through a wall it's going to drop it down to 29 which is only one less point damage but in hardcore mode you only have 30 health so that's two shots to kill because you're right there on that very barely minimum one shot kill there in hardcore so shooting through walls really isn't the thing to do overall I would say it's got okay-ish wall penetration there's worse wall penetration in this game the numbers behind it are good uh, all, all of the penetrating factors but the damage is a little bit weak so it doesn't work quite as great like the other light machine guns you do get a negative 10% movement speed with a hammer it may seem uh, deceptively fast the way I'm using it I've been using it with stock a lot because because I like to sidestep with this particular weapon, but it is a very slow moving weapon. And now we're getting to the slightly confusing part. The rate of fire on this weapon is variable. It's a lot like the AN-94, but a little bit more extreme. The first seven shots that the hammer fires shoot at 937 RPM. All following shots are at 625 RPM, or to put this in perspective, the first seven shots are the exact same speed as something like the MP7 or the Vector, or, as the, or in light machine gun terms that would be like the QBB, whereas the following seven shots shoot at 625 RPM like the MK48. So when you first pull the trigger it's going to shoot fast like the QBB and then very quickly drop off to shooting like the MK48. 
Uh, there was some confusion about this in the AN94 episode. I would like to say that this isn't the first seven rounds in the magazine. This is the first seven rounds of every single time you pull the trigger. So if you want to shoot this weapon at seven round burst or short tr trigger squeezes, it'll constantly shoot at 937 RPM. It doesn't drop down to that after the eighth bullet is fired after every single time you pull the trigger. So tapping the trigger constantly keeps the rate of fire high. If you hold down the trigger, it's just going to shoot seven rounds fast and then slow down to 625. This makes it the, both the fastest and slowest firing light machine gun, but it's tied for fastest and tied for slowest. The fastest is the QBB. The first seven rounds shoot at the same speed as the QBB. The slowest is the MK48. All the following rounds shoot at the same speed as MK48, so it makes it a very unusual weapon in that it has a highly variable rate of fire. Unfortunately for both of these speeds, the recoil is high. The first seven rounds have considerable recoil. You, you'll see me when I aim this gun, I typically aim for legs or groin area and expect it to kick up. And the following rounds, which you would think would have a lower recoil since it's shooting slower, are still rather high, or I would say that they are higher than the MK48. So the recoil is higher than the QBB and higher than the MK48 in both of those variable speeds. This is not a low recoil weapon. Thankfully, the recoil is mostly vertical. You can control it, but it's not easy to control like some of the other light machine guns. If you're crazy and you think that this weapon needs rapid fire, it'll change your RPM, uh, your initial seven round RPM up to 1,250, and it'll change your following RPM to 833, which makes it uh, really crazy. That's kind of like Scorpion slash uh, a little bit faster than a PDW or MSMC. Very, very high rate of fire. However, you get negative 55% range, and your recoil increases not only because your gun is being fired faster, but because you have a decrease in center speed, so it's very difficult to control. If you're going to put rapid fire on a light machine gun, I would prefer to do it on the MK48. This one, you can do it just because it's kind of hilarious to do it. I don't think it's necessarily the best tactic, but if you feel like running around with rapid fire, it's not that bad. It's kind of fun to do on occasion. There's an interesting glitch with this weapon to where if you shoot it in burst, it'll pretty much stay at 937 RPM. That's just having a good select fire trigger finger the timing's not hard to do however as you've seen me do a little bit if you use the rapid fire the hybrid sight rapid fire glitch it will increase the rate of fire such that every time you change zoom levels on the hybrid sight it resets the gun's rate of fire so on this gun I use the hybrid sight a bit and swap back and forth and constantly shoot fast if you'd like to see the entire video that I made about that you can click the annotation which is the text up there and it'll take you to the video there are also links to that video somewhere down in the description and I would highly recommend you'll check it out because that's why mostly why I'm using the hybrid sight on this weapon the hip fire on the hammer is poor. Just try to avoid it. You, the first little bit of hip fire isn't so bad with the high rate of fire, but after that it shoots really slow and all LMGs have bad hip fire. I really wouldn't go for the hip fire. Do it when you're desperate. If you put a laser sight on it, the hip fire is more durable. Otherwise, really, you should avoid it. The time to kill on this weapon is actually fast. It has a good damage profile, so it'll usually kill in three to four shots. And that initial rate of fire is very, very high. The other rate of fire is a little bit slow, but it's still three shots to kill. So I'm going to say that this is a fast killing weapon if you can control it properly. It has excellent iron sights as well. Normally this is the part where I cop out about the iron sights. These iron sights I really like. They are not as good as the SCAR H iron sights, though they are similar to the SCAR H iron sights because I'm, if I'm not mistaken, the hammer and the SCAR are just different variants of the same style weapon. These iron sights I can totally use with or without a silencer. Sometimes I prefer a target finder or, or oftentimes, matter of fact, the hybrid optic for this gun so I can do the little glitch and swap back and forth really fast. But I'm also very comfortable with iron sights if you don't want to waste the wild card. Well, I guess I'm spoiling the perk build a little bit. If you don't want to waste the slot for uh, a high, uh, optic of some kind, you totally don't need to. The iron sights are great. Aim down sight in and out time is unfortunately slow again, just like all the rest of the light machine guns. Uh, almost half a second to aim in and out. The quick draw handle helps with that, but not a whole lot. It's just generally going to be slow no matter what you do. Thankfully, this weapon reloads fast, though. It reloads, uh, or the reload animation, however, is 4.25 seconds, and the reload cancel time is 2.5 seconds. As you can see, there's a pretty huge gap between the animation time and the actual reload time, so I would very highly recommend that you reload cancel just about every opportunity that you get. This is fast for light machine guns. It could be so, so much slower, so do enjoy your fast reload times, and you'll be re reloading a lot because the weapon shoots very fast. Uh, light machine guns, when you know you have a lot of ammo, you have a tendency to spray with it, and the magazine size is only 
375. When you put extended mags on this weapon, it's going to go up to 100, but that's not going to help a lot. Most people don't prefer extended mags on light machine guns. I really don't. It's a 75 round gun, but you will be reloading it just because the nature of the weapon causes you to burn through your ammunition so incredibly fast. So people ask me all the time in private messages what I think about guns, what do I think about this gun, what do I think about that gun. In the case of the hammer, I think this is kind of the platypus of the LMG class. It's like uh, Treyarch couldn't quite figure out what they wanted to do with their extra light machine gun. They couldn't design a unique one because of some frame rate coupling issues that we'll discuss later and the rates of fire. So they just took all the parts, smashed it together and like, what a, it's the hammer. And if you're curious, the little platypus pictures that are showing up on the screen, I, I wanted to include a platypus and I tossed it up on Twitter and I got lots of beautiful uh, platypi, I guess you would say, for or platypuses from uh, subscribers. So they're just gonna play through here near the end of the video. But I don't want you to misunderstand me. A platypus is not a weak animal. A platypus is actually poisonous, uh, dangerous. You don't mess with platypuses, and you don't mess with a hammer. This is a very dangerous platypus. I mean, my bad. This is a very dangerous weapon. Very, hammer is a very good gun if you use it properly. It may be goofy, it may have a lot of weird characteristics, but it's still quite strong. I would tell you to use this gun if you can micromanage and multitask very well. The rate of fire does require some brain work, especially if you're going to do the hybrid sight thing or if you're just going to work it with your finger and you need to decide between when to go full auto and when to just do in burst and what range is appropriate. There's a lot of factors that go into this weapon, but if you can balance these and mentally keep up with it, the weapon is excellent. My recommended class build for this weapon is very similar to my recommended class build for a lot of guns. As a matter of fact, many of you can probably guess what this part is going to be. I don't, I'll, just some attachments I like, some I don't. I use the quick draw grip attachment, the quick draw handle that is. I know it doesn't make me aim down sights any more than 25% faster, but that's critical on this weapon. I use the stock a lot because I like to sidestep around corners and shoot people. Uh, normally, if you don't have the stock, the light machine guns just about don't sidestep at all. And most of the time, I also use the hybrid sight because I like doing the glitch where I swap back and forth between my zoom levels and make the gun shoot faster. If I'm not running the hybrid sight, I'm typically running either a silencer or a laser on this weapon. Perks are pretty normal for me. Uh, flak jacket because it's a slow weapon. I don't like getting blown up. Toughness because I don't like flinching. I like to stay on target. And dexterity because I'm running around in close quarters combat. If I didn't want dexterity, I would probably run tactical mask instead and make myself a juggernaut. Or if I didn't want any of my grenades, I would trade those in and add tactical mask on top of that. Overall, this is designed to be a kind of rough and tumble class for you to get used to the hammer and maybe figure out the way you like it. That's the way I like it. You can run it however it is that you want. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope that you learned something useful. If you'd like to check out the previous episode on the LSAT, you can click the box on the left. That's going to open in a new window. If you'd like to check out the next episode, which is how to make all of your guns shoot faster, this is a crazy one. It might take a day or two because I'm trying to do the math behind it and get it right. You can click the box on the right when it goes live. As always, if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.